purpose or objective of this lab is to take salt water and run it through the very energy intensive process known as distillation and distill it into fresh water. For this lab, we'll need a 250 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask, a Bunsen burner, a rubber stopper that we'll use for the Erlenmeyer flask while the procedure is running, rock chips or boiling chips, distilled water, our LabQuest device, two 600 milliliter beakers, a test tube that we'll be distilling our fresh water into, a lighter, and a conductivity probe. We will also need salt water, which can be found in the container in the fume hood. And we're also gonna need a pair of goggles that can be found in the back of the room. So the first thing we wanna do in this procedure is to fill the Erlenmeyer flask with a couple small handfuls of rock chips. This is gonna prevent the flask from overboiling when we run our procedure. And then we wanna add about 100 milliliters of salt water from the fume hood in the back. And then you're gonna to wanna to fill one of your 600 milliliter beakers with some ice and water to make a nice ice water bath. Next, we're gonna take our rubber tube. We're gonna feed it into the test tube. Make sure that there's no kinks or any kind of bends in the rubber tube before you run your experiment. Before we run the procedure, the first thing we need to do is measure how much salt is actually in the water. So what we're gonna do first is plug our conductivity probe into the LabQuest device. Spray off your conductivity probe with distilled water. Before we take our measurement, make sure we're gonna make sure to change our units to milligrams per liter. And on the conductivity sensor, we wanna make sure that we have it set to zero to 20,000 initially. So place the conductivity probe into your Erlenmeyer flask. Uh, I had to tilt it a little bit so that I could get my entire sensor under the water. So if you need to do that, do that. You should be getting a number on your probe somewhere in the six to 8,000 range. And again, let's spray off our conductivity probe with some distilled water. When you're ready to start the Bunsen burner, make sure to put on your nifty goggles. So let's light the Bunsen burner. You're gonna want a nice blue flame within a flame that kind of looks like this. Again, you can adjust the bottom of the Bunsen burner to increase or decrease the amount of gas that's coming out of the Bunsen burner. And you can move this to change the temperature of your flame. Once you're satisfied with your flame, let's move it under the Erlenmeyer flask. Again, be very careful to make sure that there's no bumps or kinks in your rubber tube because that can cause a really bad high pressure situation if that builds up. At this point, it's really important to keep an eye on your flask and your, the rest of your setup. If it starts to boil over, move your Bunsen burner out of the way, let it cool off so you can take the time to adjust your flame before putting it back. Keep an eye on the rubber tube and make sure uh, there's no kinks or bumps in the tube. As you can see, I'm starting to build up a little bit of water at the bottom of my test tube. Once you're happy with how much water you filled in your test tube, let's go ahead and turn off the gas. So while I was waiting for it to cool, I filled up another beaker, uh, one of the 600 milliliter beakers with some distilled water. And what I'm gonna do now, being very careful so I don't burn myself, I'm gonna take out the test tube. And I'm gonna transfer it over into the distilled water beaker. So now we'll take our last conductivity measurement. Since we're expecting a much lower number, let's flip our sensor to the lowest setting, which is zero to 200. 
make sure again that we're looking at milligrams per liter. And then we'll measure the conductivity of our new solution, which as you can see is significantly lower than what we started with, about 19.2 milligrams per liter. One more time, let's spray some distilled water on our conductivity probe and let that dry off a little bit before the lab is done. As always, let's rinse out our glass equipment about five times, just so that we make sure it gets nice and clean. This can be a pretty messy lab with a lot of different parts, so please just make sure to take the time to clean up when you're finished.